Mario, Paul, we have to debate something. We we did this last year. What? I think if it's what I think you're gonna say, we did it last year, and I fell on my face. You're gonna have to. Are we going like alphabetical here? Because I can think of a few times that. Like, well, are we? How, are I'm we, not talking about the time where I broke out my rollerblades. <laughs> So here's here's what we have to debate. Josh Allen, expectation level. Is he a four thousand yard passer? We did a rapid fire segment. Yeah. Um, for the Pro Bowlers and up. And if you're not, um, if you're not a channel member, one of the uh, one of the hashtag heroes, we just want to mention once again that uh, 50%, 50 percent of the proceeds that we get from the membership goes to the Punt Foundation. We can't thank you guys enough, all the channel members that have came in. You've gotten some uh, special behind the scenes stuff, a little bit extra uh, hashtag extras, and um, and uh, you know some behind the. You know, behind the camera, some of the things that Paul and I talk about and whatnot, some extra videos as well. Whichever one you take, I'll take the other. Oh, man. That's that twist in the segment we always do. Whatever you take, I'll take the other. Okay. I'm going to stick to my guns because in the rapid fire, you asked me about... I think I said 3,500. 3, and I said under. So I got to take the under on this. 4,000 yards? 4,000 yards passing. yards? Mm-hmm. Did you want to talk all purpose... All purpose yards. Okay, now now we have at least the opportunity to talk about this. Four thousand passing yards? That's the that's the push. No. All purpose is always the push. Okay. But that's the push all the time. All right. So you're really gonna stick to your guns on four thousand passing yards. I'm just taking the other side of you. That's well, it's gonna be on there, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm always wrong. <laughs> Why does anybody watch? <laughs> I don't. I don't think there's any way that you're looking at four thousand passing yards. Why not though? I mean, for the simple, you mentioned in an episode last week about throwing more, sure, and how they have to throw more, and they have all these weapons. Yeah. You drafted two wide receivers. You got Diggs. Mm -hmm. You got, got Beasley and Brown. You got Moss. Yeah. You got Singletary. You got a bunch of different options for Josh Allen to get the ball out of his hands as fast as he can and into the hands of a playmaker that can make people miss. Mm -hmm. Talking about elusive backs last week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that being said. Uh, he has the, the possibility to throw for 4,000 yards with this new revamped offense that's going to be coming in this year. Now, the curveball in it is chemistry with the truncated you know, uh, offseason. Uh, yeah, that plays to the Bills' advantage, right? I believe Only it does. really adding digs yes. is that entire returning offensive line, it's everybody's back. You know, the gang's back together again. So the only one that you're adding in is Dick. So, yeah, the Bills definitely win continuity. The only thing ESPN said was good about the Bills in 2020 was continuity. That is true. Is it 250 yards a game, passing? What, to get to 4,000? 4, yeah. Is it 250 really a game? Teacher. I'm, I was trying to do it in my head fast. I can't do it. 250 yards a game. He has 4,000. When you break it down per game, it doesn't sound like a lot. It doesn't. That's why people get so upset that he hasn't done it yet. Well, how many career 300-yard passing games does he have? Donut. Right. So expecting him to average 50 yards less than a not career high. Yeah, you know, but you're I, bringing in weapons that could give him those things. Yeah, but I think that I think a lot of that is is trust that Dable's got something, some pages to the book that we haven't seen yet. And I got to be honest with you, I don't think they're there. And if they're there, they're blank right now. And homeboy's going to write them up in pencil like he did his first season. Oh, my God. When I saw him drawing up plays on a lined piece of paper with a crayon, I was terrified. Was it a crayon? That was an actual yeah. marker. Okay, well, it was probably, it was probably just a <laughs> pencil. It doesn't matter. Either way. <laughs> I think he can do it. I think he can throw for 4,000. I think he's going to be asked to throw for 4,000. We did the rapid fire segment last week, and I asked you if Devin Singletary was going to rush for one thousand yards. Mm -hmm. You said purely rush or all purpose. I said rush. You said no. no. So where are those yards going to come from? You think it's going to be they're going to rush for two thousand yards, and it's going to be nine hundred from him, and which wouldn't be totally out of the realm of possibility with the James Stewart and um, right 
Yeah, go 900, 700. You got a 1,600-yard rusher on your hand. Who was it? James D'Angelo Williams. D James Stewart and D'Angelo Williams. D'Angelo Williams. Right. From? Who cares if it was 15 years ago? They did that for Carolina, though. So maybe that's a recipe that Bean and McDermott actually think could work. It's a great thing for a defensive head coach. Uh, we got to stop with these cliches too. That's true. They're true. They're true. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna deny that they're they're not true. But we gotta. We're starting to sound mainstream. That's not us. Oh God. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I think he can throw for over four thousand, and I think if he throws for over four thousand, that's going to be accompanied by thirty-five passing touchdowns. How many interceptions? Here's the deal with that one, and I will say this: sixteen. Okay. I'll say he'll throw one again. You're 35 TDs to 16 INCs? Well, I think he'll have okay. greater than a 2 to 1 ratio because okay. he had it this year. Didn't he? That's what I mean. 2 to 1? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm good with that. Okay. That's fine. All right. Um, so, the one here's the issue that I have with Allen. His arm is so strong and it covers up a lot of mistakes. And, and here's what I mean when I say that. I know exactly what you're talking about, but. Tell, tell everybody else. Oh, you do? Yes. All right, so tell me what you think I'm saying. Go ahead. It mistakes in his mechanics. No. Okay. No, no, no. Then I'll, I'll so, take that one. So, yeah, so, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> what I mean when I say that is, Allen makes most of his reads really late, and his arm is so strong he can get away with it. But I want you to go ahead and look at the Bills receivers and their yards after catch. What? What? Continue. I want you to go look at Bill's receivers and yards after catch because what you're going to find is a lot of stop, drop, and roll because Allen waits till the receiver is open and doesn't throw right when they get open. What are you so What are you so smug about over there? I'm I'm la I'm smiling and I'm upset at the same time. Okay, okay. I'm smiling because clear, like, almost verbatim. That's what I said when he was drafted. <laughs> I'm upset because now I gotta look it up and find the clip of when I said that. Oh my god! I said the, the I said the, the, the exactly the beautiful thing about Allen is that even if he makes the reads late, he has a strong enough arm to get it there. Right, but, but it does lend itself. The next step of that is you're not giving your playmakers a chance to make plays because right. they're covered by somebody else. Right. So what's happening is while they're shaking open, and that's when Allen is throwing to them. Defenses adjust all the time. Very rarely do they end up leaving guys open. If they do leave them open, they end up closing that gap near yes. the end of the play. And that's what you're seeing a lot of is you're seeing a lot of, you know, probably one of the reasons why the Bills struggled with, you know, passes down the field is it, if you're going to wait till a guy's open, I mean, there was nobody on this team last year outside of Robert Foster who, who really doesn't see a ball, doesn't track a ball great downfield. There's really nobody that could get separation downfield. No, and, and so your point is this, is that if you have a quarterback who makes reads late, they have to be more accurate mm -hmm. to have 4,000 yards. Right. If you have a guy that can read the field correctly, he can produce rack for his receivers. Right, so that's, that's Which the Which gets issue. him to 4,000. Okay. Exactly, right. So if Allen can start throwing, throwing to guys just as they're getting open, he's going to get more yards naturally because that's where the yardage is, yes. right? Yes. You're not when the defense is closing back down on you because you've been open for three seconds. Well, I think because he has receivers that are so good at gaining separation, that might stun his growth because he's going to wait for them to get open even more now. But that's part of Dable's offense. Is it's so littered with read routes that Allen is adjust is is watching the receivers and then once the dis receivers show and show the decision, he's not anticipating what their decision is. So while we can talk about chemistry all day long, I don't really think Allen was all that dialed into what is what routes is what route adjustments his receivers were running last year. I mean, and and that's probably why we saw a, a on total. I mean, granted, for Cole Beasley it was a career season, but. There were many games that Cole Beasley was just not anywhere, right? He was nowhere to be found. And is that because Cole Beasley depends on that wide receiver quarterback relationship and Allen wasn't able to anticipate what Cole Beasley was going to do? Maybe they were doing the reads <clears throat> and Allen saw something else. 
Well, that's but that's what I'm saying is yeah, he's yeah. not on the same page with the receivers with those with those read adjustments, and that's the problem with Dable's offense is it's so predicated on route adjustments, like and that's that's the deal here. That's that's what's stopping Allen. So you think that is that is one of the reasons why they picked Allen over everybody else because he has the arm strength if he makes a read late that he could still if he doesn't read what the receiver reads it doesn't matter because his arm will get it there. I mean. If a play breaks down, who would you rather have the football, Josh Allen or Josh Rosen? That's where you win. Russell Wilson. <laughs> Jamarcus Rosen. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't say who I'd rather have paid my cheesecake factory bill. <laughs> oh, the chosen one. <laughs> what a mistake. He could have been a great left tackle. <laughs> I, I guess, again, that's kind of where the rubber has to meet the road here is – do you think Allen has progressed enough or will have progressed enough to make the adjustments to his game to take this offense to the next level, to take him to the next level? That's still a bugaboo for me, is I need to see him start throwing guys just as they're getting open. I know there's the old adage, good quarterbacks throw guys open. That's a line of nonsense. Good th- quarterbacks know when to throw the ball when their receiver is getting open. They don't throw the guy open. That has nothing to do with it. That's that's it's total it's total misconception. I think that I think where that comes in is where you put it on the spot. If the guy's covered, you put it on the spot. Like Jordy Nelson for a majority of his career was covered. Yeah. <laughs> Rogers put it some spot that only Jordy can get. Right. Uh, well, let me ask you this: Do you think Allen has the ability to do that? Yes. I think he does. But I feel we disagree on this. Well, we disagree on it. For the fact, the point that I wanted to bring up five minutes ago was <laughs> his mechanics. <laughs> you know that? Did you ever double clutch a throw, mm. but never reset your feet a hundred times? Yeah, you, the ball goes a little different direction. Mm. You know, Allen loves to do that, and because throughout his entire career and his life, high school, college, whatever, his arm was so strong, no one bothered to fix it. Right. Because he could still do the things that he needed to do. Yep. If you ever double clutched a pass before, but you didn't reset your feet, you got yeah. a base. You got feet a base. Are concrete. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're done. And you're throwing all arm, all. Yeah, and it's, your lower body's gone. Yeah. So that, I think, which you and I disagree on, you're saying it can't be fixed at this point. I'm saying he has to clean it up. I'm saying it's not being fixed. He's got to clean it up. And the result of that will be him throwing guys open. Well, and we've talked about the Allen's throwing base going back to the draft video. That was oh one of the God. big things about Allen was when you watched him in the pocket, he went from being 6'5 to 6'2 because his his base was huge. Like, he would just get really wide in the pocket. His legs were so far spread apart. Because he <clears throat> on. waited for guys to get open. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That, but that I think I again it's it's something that if you're not really there just yet, then I don't really know if I've got the right quarterback coach and offensive coordinator, more offensive coordinator, right? Because I mean, you've gone through two quarterback coaches now. I know when you talk about quarterback coaches, especially. I mean, but Dorsey was able to work with Cam Newton, and I didn't see many changes in Newton's throwing motion. No. A lot of things that he was doing. No. Big, big, strong, mobile guy. And I didn't see anything else. But there's some things that you can work with and some things you can't, right? There's some things that even if you're mechanically going to break down, it doesn't always detrimentally impact you. No, no, no. Having a wide base makes you a big target in an NFL pocket. Makes you a big target. Makes you a big target registered for an ACL. That's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Over 4,000. Oh, so you're saying over 4,000. I'll still throw for over 4,000. There's just too many options for him. Is Allen is one of the reasons that Allen waits for guys to get open, and you're gonna nail me to a cross for this one. Is one of the reasons Allen waits for guys to get open because he doesn't he he's he is truly just not a very accurate passer. Is is that the reason why he waits for guys to get open? Because it's easier to complete a pass to a guy who's got no side of him blocked out. That is to complete a pass to a guy who's just cut, who's who's a step into his cut. And has Allen is Allen apprehensive of it because he's literally been able to throw a football through a receiver since he was twelve. 
you're you're not nailed to a cross. Okay. So I'll say that. You have a very valid argument that a lot of people want that question answered as well. Majority of the people who <laughs> reside at One Bill's Drive want that question answered. I understand yeah. that. A lot of people in Bill's Mafia and Hashtag Nation, you want that question answered. Maybe he's, that could be a possibility. He's just not very accurate. That's the trade-off. You know, you can't get, you know, they talk about you can't get all the line, you know, in all the lines in heaven. You know, <laughs> you ever hear that phrase? Yeah. So he got in the, my arm is stronger than Dan Marino's. And maybe he kind of got behind Breeze and a bunch of other people right. in the accuracy line. Yeah. So that could be a case. That could be a case where it is. I like to go back to two things. One, the point you made earlier where maybe in the f- first year of actually being in the offense and whatnot, his reads were different than the wide receivers. That's also a valid point that could be made as well. I am going to just jump into your wheelhouse, unfortunately, and say it's not the trust in the receivers or the trust in his own arm. I think it's the trust in the OC. I don't think he trusts that what Dable said manifests on the field, and that happens, therefore he doesn't trust it. That's my contention. Okay. So I I think there's an argument to be made. Right, and, and I think and we make them here frequently. <laughs> we do make frequent arguments. <laughs> so, what do you guys think? Over four thousand, under four thousand. Do you think any of our arguments hold weight today? So, drop them down.